welcome to Beirut, the capital of Lebanon. I'm more excited to try a Lebanese breakfast. It's one of them cuisines that you eat everywhere around the world, all the time at home, and now we get to try the real deal. So it was something that I didn't really want to dwell on. For the first time ever, we are millionaires. Mm. Uh oh. Okay, I don't even know what just happened there. It could be Singapore. <laughs> it could be Singapore. It's not. It could be. Morning and welcome to Beirut, the capital of Lebanon. From Iraqi Kurdistan, Erbil, we took around a one and a half hour flight and arrived late last night in the city. The city, the country that in recent years you'll probably know has had a pretty hard time with the port explosion and the financial crisis, but hopefully they are on the road to recovery, known as the Paris of the East and a city with an incredibly thriving nightlife scene that we need to check out. Just look at this, in the heart of downtown, a city of over two million people and in the hotel that we're staying in, we actually get breakfast served in the room. So you can't come to Lebanon and not think of Lebanese food, one of the best cuisines in the world. And we're gonna to start today with hopefully a Lebanese breakfast. I didn't realize what a great skyline Beirut had, but you can see straight away some buildings that were possibly affected by the explosion and somewhat abandoned and then these incredibly fancy new sky rises that are going up. Good morning. Can I please order two Lebanese breakfasts? Thank you so much, Shikran. Hi, good Hello. morning. How are you? Thank you so much. Sorry for being late. That's okay, wow, that looks amazing. Could we have it on the back, yeah, please? Sure. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Not a bad start to the morning. Good morning. This is this is wild. We have a full Lebanese feast this morning. We're staying at the Parisian Hotel, so being right near the coast because Lebanon's on the Mediterranean, we have um, a colourful array for breakfast. We have lebne, which is the um, Lebanese yogurt. I think it's double strained. Obviously, we have hummus, and then we have full. Medames, which is like a bean stew. We have our fried eggs and then your fruit. We have a Lebanese coffee, and obviously, like I said, you're on the Mediterranean, so you have some olives. I don't really like olives that much, but Lebanon is quite a small country, so we're actually going to be using Beirut as a base, um, which I'm very excited for. But I'm more excited to try a Lebanese breakfast. It's one of them cuisines that you eat everywhere around the world all the time at home, and now we get to try the real deal, the proper thing. First, the Lebanese coffee, which... Is it strong? It's strong, right. So they say Lebanese coffee, Iraqi coffee, Cypriot coffee, Turkish coffee, they're all very similar, similar part of the world, but it's very good, very strong. It'll make me need to go to the toilet. But <laughs> the crowning glory is the hummus. Again, eat this almost every day at home. But now the real thing, they got the best cuisine, haven't they? They got the Mediterranean meets Arabic Middle East. Just get involved. <laughs> Just get involved with that. We spent a little bit too long indulging in that Lebanese feast, so I'll give you a really quick room tour. Obviously, you have seen the balcony, and this is what around $60 a night can get you in Beirut, in the downtown area. We have a huge bed. It's quite nice, actually, because I can hide away from Matt. TV, a little sofa area. We actually got given a mini upgrade, so it's kind of like a slightly bigger room. We have microwave kettle. Um, a desk area for me and of course our bathroom with lots of storage. We're actually located pretty close to Hamra Street which is like one of the main pedestrian streets here in downtown Beirut but it's also the place where we have to go to exchange our dollars. It was something that I didn't really want to dwell on, but it is the reality of life here in Lebanon. We have to go and get the black market rate, which today, one dollar is around 50,000 Lebanese lira, but the official government rate is still one dollar to 1,500 Lebanese lira. So if you went by this rate, you'd be paying hundreds of dollars for a cappuccino. So we have to go there to exchange our money before. About six months ago, it was incredibly cheap for everything if you came and you owned dollars because you were getting the black market rate. So you, a lot of shops like H&M had to close down because you were getting clothes for like two, 
$3, but now they've put the prices high to anticipate the change of the lira each day it fluctuates. Hello, Salam. How are you my friend, you okay? I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Everyone is so friendly here in Beirut. So you have to anticipate each day. So today we'll only be changing around 50 to 100 dollars because it fluctuates so much and you could end up losing a lot of money. Um, what is the rate for dollar to Lebanese today? Fifty. Can we do one hundred dollars? One hundred dollars, please. Hundred. Yes, thank you. Chagrin. Task complete. Basically, there's just currency exchanges the whole way along Hamra Street, and the best thing you can do is ask for the rate for today. It fluctuates every day. Um, so at the minute, one USD is getting you fifty thousand. Lebanese pounds in or Lebanese lira in the exchange. We changed 100 US dollars and we got 5 million so Lebanese. Now uh, we are now, for the first time ever, we are millionaires. Can I have uh, one manikish with just cheese? Okay. Please, thank you. That's how you eat it? For time? Oh, yeah, you know, no, yeah? Okay. Uh oh mm. good? It's very good. So this is fataya, which is spinach, it's spicy, spicy, olives. And okay, and some yogurt. Yogurt. We've got a lot going Cucumber. on. Cucumber. Cucumber. Everything Tomatoes. mixed. Rocca, mint. Okay, I'll okay. go. Ready? This was a big surprise. Yes. Glove on? Yes, glove on. Okay, yeah. Go, go, go. This is olives, yes. Oh. <laughs> olives, mm. <laughs> it's good. What do you think? Okay, I don't even know what just happened there. We ordered the manikish, our breakfast dish, which we are actually waiting for. Oh my god, it's all over your face. And the guy just brought out, what were they called again? Fatai? Fatai? So it's like a. Cheese, that's like a cheese and spinach pie, samosa type thing, and some yogurt. I'd let it throw it up my mouth. Spicy sauce, olives. Welcome to Beirut. That is Lebanese hospitality for you. I'm still not sure exactly what just happened or what we've just eaten, but this is what we came here for. This is the manikish, which is basically like a Lebanese pizza. They have it for breakfast, and you can get them at these places that are a snack place or a fern, a place that's like a cheap bakery that does cheap eats. This was, how much was this? Um, 120,000. So about $2 for this, and we got the one covered in a lot of cheese. Oh, that's good. Cheesy, pizzery, fattening. Goodness. That was snack Faisal. It's been around since 1984, and actually, if we were using the bank exchange rate, it would have cost us 18 US dollars. I think that puts into perspective how much the money has completely changed here. But actually, it's super famous for uni kids when they've been out on a night out and they grab their snack because it's open 24 hours. So, great place to grab your manikish and whatever else it was that you put in our mouths. Um, but now we're now walking along the Cornish, getting that sea breeze. It's, it's not so what you warm. expect from a city. It really isn't what you expect at all. And it's like mid-January right now. We've got amazing sunshine and the sea just looks so inviting. <laughs> Look at this place. <laughs> There are so many positives about Lebanon, this being one of them. The cafes and restaurants along the seafront. This is Bayrock Cafe and behind me you will see the very famous Pigeon Rock. This is just reminding me of like Greece, of Cyprus, all the rocks we've seen. It is stunning. This is some place sat here overlooking the Mediterranean. You would think you're in Cyprus. I mean we're only a few hundred kilometers, maybe less from the island itself and looking out at what doesn't really look like a pigeon. I don't know why they called it pigeon rock, but the Mediterranean blue waters, the white rocks coming up, 60 meters high supposedly that is, and it is a hot, hot day today. You've got people sunbathing, people in their bikinis. This is winter. This is, this is winter in Beirut. Crab. 
we've definitely got to go back to that area. Mediterranean Sea, beach club, bars, and it was only $2 for a coffee. Some of the places you'll find will have the price in dollar and then we'll exchange it into whatever the daily black market rate is into Lebanese. But we jumped in a bolt and took a 15 minute drive across the city for again less than two dollars so about 100,000 Lebanese lira bolt is actually a little bit cheaper than uber out here so I'd recommend getting that and we've headed to the port the site of the unfortunate explosion on August 4th 2020 when a lot of the downtown area was actually destroyed this is a very difficult thing to talk about I think we can all remember seeing it on TV when the explosion happened and just how absolutely devastating it was here in Beirut over 200 people unfortunately lost their lives and um, it caused 15 billion US dollars worth of damage over 300,000 people lost their homes but it is just it's surreal to be here so so surreal and one thing I will say is that behind Matt what you'll see in a minute is not what I was expecting. I kind of expected to see more destruction, but I think that shows positively Resilience. how the res they are resilient and the buildings are being built up. Like there's so many new buildings being built. If I zoom in right there, where the explosion took place, and it's still smoking. That's crazy that it's still smoking over two and a half years later. It just feels, like you said, so surreal to be standing here. And these are all the buildings that are blown out or destroyed, and most of them have been repaired or being finished off like this fancy one right there. The port is actually quite a sensitive area to film in. I believe, I'm not certain that there's still an ongoing investigation, but a short walk from the port, you come to the Blue Mosque and the Martyr Square, which we're just walking up to now. This has been the site of many a protest in Lebanon. Like I said, they've had a really hard recent history, the civil war ending in 1990, then you had the pandemic, the financial crisis, and then topped off with the explosion. So it's been a hard time, but the young people of the city, of the country, are trying to rise up. And I feel like you can definitely see that just walking around the downtown area. You can still see signs of many protests along the square and along the roads and behind me is actually the biggest mosque in Lebanon, the Blue Mosque and I think it just shows the 50-50 uh, the split almost uh, here in the country because right next door you have a church so you have 50% Christians around and 50% Muslims in the country. The plan from the main square was to go and check out the Beirut Souk area which is sort of like an outdoor market with lots of high-end restaurants shops bars but this is the area and you can see most things they're pretty much closed some things are coming back but they just don't seem to be open most of it is closed or being rebuilt or has moved somewhere else you can see a couple are open like Kiko there got a lot are closed and this probably shows the financial gap between the rich and probably the working class in the country that only a few can afford to come and shop in a place like this. This is very different. This is not what I was expecting at all. This is Zaitune Bay and it's basically a marina with lots of cafes, bars, restaurants all along the front, a yacht club. Um, and I think with all the walking that we've done today, we deserve a nice cold beer. Lebanese beer. A Lebanese beer. Look at this place. It's not what I expected one bit. The sort of thing you'll find in Singapore. You've got all bars, restaurants along here. Sky rises behind an ultra modern yacht but... in the distance. It could be Singapore. <laughs> it could be Singapore. It's not, but it could be. Cheers. Cheers. Al Mazza, proudly <laughs> Lebanese. You do not realize how grateful I am and how in need I am of the 12 days in Iraq. Just go everywhere, have bars left, right, and center. The best nightlife in the Middle East. Let's give it a go.
we're going to have to rate it. It was instantly going to get a 10 out of 10. Oh, because it's been so I long. I literally haven't had a beer in almost... Actually, no, I had one in Erbil. It's been almost two weeks without a beer, so... I'm grateful to be in Beirut right now. To be sat on a spot on a fancy marina that was only $3, so 150,000 Lebanese lira as of today. And we have some meze. $3 a beer in one of the most high-end areas in all of Beirut. I cannot complain, but it's nice to see that the city has places like that that is still thriving. But we've jumped in a quick bolt and we've headed to Ma Mikhail, which is supposedly the best area for nightlife in all of Beirut. There are bars, restaurants on every side of the road. We're a little bit early. It is only five o'clock so most people are probably still at work you might also notice that at night um, the streets are actually pretty dark because they conserve a lot of electricity so not all streets have the street lights on but we now have a choice of about 50 bars to enjoy the best nightlife in the Middle East the streets are just lined with bars the whole way along I don't know which one to pick you've even got rooftop, rooftop nightclubs, nightclubs. We, we need to come out and do like a full Beirut nightlife. Are we not too old? Cheers. Cheers. We might be a little bit early, but I definitely like this place. This was 86 Lebanese lira. I'm still a little bit confused. I think that's about $1.60, which is very good. And they have happy hour on, so I cannot complain. <laughs> we were actually just speaking to the waiter of the bar who said that this area was heavily affected during the explosion. There's even a petrol station there that's just completely demolished um, but it again it shows you that they have built it back up they are resilient and actually there's a sign over there that says residential area your noise is a killer so we are way too early for the nightlife here I'm still enjoying myself though on my uh, the only ones on the right now. we're the only ones on the street but it's our own little party this is crazy so the three beers in there came to 258,000 lira but they also have, you might not be able to see that, the exchange rate, if you went by the official government rate, it would have been $172 for three small beers. But we are now on the hunt for the best way to end any night in Beirut, and that is shawarma. My friend, thank you. Shukran. This is how it's done. This is what I was looking for. This is House of Shawarma, and this is actually so a shawarma. What a shock that there was shawarma in the House of Shawarma. I've gone for a beef one, and that is basically drowning in tahina. First shawarma in Lebanon. Why it's You wanted one so bad, didn't mm -hmm. you? All down and down to money, shawarma, shawarma, shawarma. This is pretty much how you should end every night with some sloppy food, kebab, shawarma, or halloumi. We are near Cyprus. And some beers. We are right near Cyprus, and it's good halloumi. As I was saying earlier, the, uh, the electricity on a lot of the streets is preserved at night. This is all I can see on my walk home with my belly full of shawarma. Good morning from Beirut, Lebanon. We, uh, we just about made it back last night. You definitely notice on the smaller side streets the power outages at night, but with a belly full of shawarma, we made it. And what a cool city. Beirut is this is a city that I was so excited to explore and it definitely didn't disappoint so liberal such a livable city you could easily base yourself here for two to three months to explore the rest of the Middle East and even though they have been through hard times you can notice the resilience they are definitely rising up speaking to some of the locals the younger generation in the bars they're positive they're optimistic and you know times will definitely change in this country what a day we are actually going to use Beirut as a base as it is a relatively small country and we can travel to other cities in two hours like the other side of the country we have so much more to see and do so we'll see you in the next one from Beirut Lebanon